talk to you guys about Circa and um, in the whole ethos of Circa about trying to be brief to the point, just the facts. I'm going to try to keep this short and to the point. So um, you guys may have seen this recently. Is this really the future of news, these giant screens? Uh, do you guys know what this is? Fox, the Fox News, uh, Shepard Smith's new uh, news uh, terminal. Um, the idea for us is that we're dealing with these very small devices. Uh, we, we built news made for mobile, uh, for phones specifically, because mobile has kind of been this catch-all. And um, I feel like we should be talking about every device separately because they all have their own uh, specific uh, way that content can be really optimized for. Uh, what you do on an iPad is very different than what you do on an iPhone and even an Android phone. They all have a very uh, particular way that you can present things efficiently and, and well. Um, but another aspect of mobile, um, you guys get push alerts from all different apps now, and all different news apps and you know, games that you know, somebody's playing a game and they want you to play a game, and you, you're just getting inundated with all these different alerts. Uh, and a big part of that is breaking news alerts. And I really feel like the, the push alert is broken. Uh, you get all sorts of mindless crap uh, pushed to your phone. And it's started, starting to become kind of like the banner ad. After a while, you just don't even notice those banner ads anymore. They just kind of you know, fly by you, and it, it doesn't mean anything anymore. So here's an example. Um, CNN sends out a, a push alert that says, uh, there's a poll that they ran, and slightly more people are angry at Republicans than Democrats for the government shutdown. I mean, in my eyes, it's not really a breaking news alert. Um, and the other idea is that, you know, this isn't really an efficient way, we think, uh, to read an article on a phone. It's just this, you know, I'd love to read this in a newspaper or on an iPad or, you know, on a, on a web browser, but... This is when I'm on the train or if I'm, you know, at the supermarket waiting in line with my groceries, I'm not, I don't really have the time to kind of scroll through and read the article in this format. Um, so, you know, this is really difficult for people who are incumbents to get around because the whole idea of building an article in a certain way has been done for a really long time and trying to figure out how to make that work on mobile is a difficult thing to do. Um, I feel like it's almost a change in culture in the newsroom, and it's thinking about presenting things differently for each platform that's out there. Um, and that costs time and money, and unfortunately, I really feel like it's something you can't really get around, and we have to almost have editors in the newsroom who are thinking for the web, um, and for, for uh, iPads, delivering uh, information for iPads. And then mobile is really its own entirely different thing. Another aspect is that Jeff always says this is do your best and link to the rest. And the idea is that you, know, you get as much as you can on your own, go out, do your reporting, talk to people, talk to primary sources, gather source documents, and then the people that are also uh, reporting on things that can enhance your story. In this case, it would be CNN and the New York Times. This is a, another entirely different organization that's citing these people, but notice there's no link here and there's no link up there. So part of the what we do at Circa is we want to be very upfront about all our sourcing, who we're, who we're basing some of our information from, uh, and making that very transparent. And then the other aspect that we're really trying to be mindful of is anonymous sourcing. Now, I'm totally uh, on board with certain cases where you have to get information from anonymous sources because there's no other way to get it. And I'm much more willing to do that when it's an individual who's going up against a very powerful entity. When it's the other way around, it tends to be PR for that very large entity. Um, and those anonymous officials often wind up putting you in situations like this where this is a, a report that came out uh, a couple weeks ago where all the major news organizations were saying that this individual uh, who is in, um, one of the offshoots of Al-Qaeda, the Sh uh, Shabab leader in Somalia, may have been killed. New York Times reported. Then they said they may, he may have been captured. Fox News says that the... Uh, 
the, one of the people who were involved in the Kenyan mall attack uh, had been killed, and then breaking news, uh, then picking it up from the New York Times. So, I mean, this happens all day long on social media and through push alerts. Jim Roberts gathers it all together and says, for those keeping score, New York Times said Jabob leader killed. New York Times, uh, NBC says captured, and then Fox News says killed. ABC, AP says the suspect's not found. So everybody's reporting all these different things. The whole thing turned out to be wrong. Uh, they didn't capture anybody, didn't kill anybody. Uh, the mission turned out to not wind up, pick, uh, pick up anyone. So, in fact, we got it wrong as well. But the difference is, uh, we can push a correction. And the idea of being transparent about your corrections is not really something that most news organizations embrace, usually down at the bottom of the article, kind of buried. Um, sometimes they may not even offer a correction, they'll just change it. And you don't see the difference between the original article and the change. So what we do is we can push a correction directly in the app. Um, and we can actually send it out as a push alert. So if you're following that story, and that's one of the things that we allow is that every single story that we have, you can follow those stories individually and get a push alert every time something changes. So if there's a correction made, it gets sent to your phone and says, hey, this was information that was out there, and we found that that information is incorrect. This is a correction that we've made. And you push it out to your phone. And the, uh, going back to the presentation, uh, what we're doing with the format is we're breaking it into points, and we call that atomizing the news. We're breaking into core elements, which is facts, stats, quotes, uh, media being you know tweets, video, stuff like that. So we feel like on the phone, um, you're limited in terms of space. And every piece that we put out, we limit it almost like a tweet would be 140 characters. We limit it to 300 characters, which is the size of the screen uh, for the, an iPhone, how many characters you would be able to fit. Because uh, we don't want people to have to see anything in a single point that won't go past a single screen. Uh, and what we're doing is we're trying to boil it down to the facts, the bare essential information in the story. No commentary, no analysis, um, no opinion. It's really just tell me what I need to know about this story. And it, here's an example. There's, when we're pushing an update, when after you've read the story, we want to cut down on the redundancy of having to read the article over and over again. So, you know, most traditional articles, you have to kind of hunt for what the update was. What we do when a story is, uh, was, uh, is updated, we send you directly to the point in the story that's been updated and just give you that information so you can find out what's new and go on with your day. And one of the things that we recently uh, added, and, you know, most people wouldn't find this entirely innovative because everyone has breaking uh, push alerts. But I don't know if you noticed this, but a lot of those push alerts, when they happen, you click on them and they don't lead you anywhere. They just take you to like the, the, the front page of the app and most of the time they don't even have a story ready for it. What we do is we always have a stub ready and waiting for you whenever we put out a push alert. And what that allows you to do is you can follow that storyline so as it starts to evolve, you'll be notified immediately when new information is available. And again, we only want you to get push alerts for things that you care about. So we're very careful uh, about the things that we push out widely and broadly to everyone. We've only done it uh, three times since we've added this feature because we have a very high threshold for what we would do a wide breaking push alert. Everything else, you'd have to subscribe to that story to get a push alert for. So you're making a direct connection with stories that you actually care about and want push alerts for. Uh, this shows the traffic spikes uh, during the Boston uh, bombing. And these circles are where we were putting out the uh, updates. And since we have this direct relationship with all the people that follow the story, you can see they're coming back because they've, they've been notified that we updated the story. And you can see that, you know, Unlike a lot of places where you may not know that the story was updated and that trend line doesn't really show the spikes like we do, um, that follow really does allow us to have this really in, uh, interesting um, beneficial relationship where the, uh, we can have a story run over long periods of time and continue to have people come back to it over and over again. 
Uh, we recently released for Android. For a long time, we're just on the iPhone, and we're seeing all sorts of... Jeff's very happy about that. So now all you Android users can, um, can benefit from all the different features that we have. Um, and a lot of people are like, how do you guys do this? You only have 10 editors. Um, the reason why we can be so efficient is because our, our editors only have to focus most of the time on doing updates rather than writing new stories. Um, because of the format that we write in, we have points, they write in points, so when something happens, a lot of times a story will have a point that's shared across multiple stories. You, up that, it, you update that point, and it gets updated across all the stories that share that point. So there's all sorts of efficiencies on the back end uh, with, with our editors that allow us to cover a lot of stories. Uh, we, do, we touch about 100 stories a day that get updates, uh, and we ma manage to do about 35 to 40 new stories a day, and that's quite a bit for just 10 editors. These are our founders, uh, Ben Hu, Arsenio, and Matt Galligan. Uh, we have, uh, these are our, our product people. Uh, this is the, the configuration of our news team. Uh, our backers, uh, some folks who have been successful in different areas. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Who do you see as your competition? Um, for the way that we're kind of producing news, nobody's really doing it in the exact way that we are. Um, but obviously, anyone who um, has a news app is sort of a competitor. Uh, but we're kind of unique in the format that we're, we're in. I think it eventually, the format that we use will be copied, and uh, the idea of following articles will, will be copied by other folks. Um, but right now, just anyone who has a news app is kind of a competitor. Yeah. Um, could you describe how you guys came up with the breaking news alert tone? Oh, right. <laughs> um, so Matt Galligan, he was a big fan of this digital music uh, uh, guy. I'm not really in. Uh, big into techno and music like that, but he happens to like a particular artist, and uh, he he reached out to him and said, "Could you come up with a really unique sound for our breaking news alert?" Uh, and he actually spent you know like a couple months trying to how do you, how, how he could fit a a, a a one second tone and make it really sound interesting, unique, and have um, a quality that wouldn't be annoying. Uh, it would be kind of uh, interesting and would. Uh, wouldn't would would uh, would make you uh, realize that this is a circa news alert. Make it really unique and and uh, the guy's actually named BT. I don't know if, if you're into techno, you might know who this guy is. He knows. <laughs> oh yeah. Go ahead. Anybody else? Oh, okay. What's your uh, revenue model? So right now uh, we're we're not running any ads. Um, there's a couple ideas for how we would generate revenue. Um, we want to be careful about not making the experience uh, become cluttered. So if there was s sort of ad that would run in it, it would have to be in a way that would, wouldn't take away from the presentation of the app. Um, other ideas are that we, had, since we built our CMS from scratch and no one's really chunking and creating points to present news, we could offer other organizations uh, the CMS and license it out. Uh, we could also, allow people to use the container that the app is in and give it to a brand like a Red Bull. Red Bull has a lot of interesting content uh, that they put out as a brand. They can take the container that we use and put out their own app. So there's a lot of ideas of how we can monetize it. But we're, we're not quite there yet. We're trying to scale it up first. How would you describe uh, people are interacting with multimedia elements on mobile? And how is it unique to the text updates, for instance? So it's kind of difficult. Um, to get people to do a lot when it comes to multimedia on the phone. I feel like unless you're a game and that's an active thing that you want to do. Um, with news, I think people really want to just get information quickly in, in a concise way. Um, we do want to have a video uh, point at some, jet, uh, at some point. <laughs> uh, but I think the way we would do video is it would be very short and it would um, give a visualization of a specific thing 
uh, or event in the story that we want to get across quickly. So we may describe it in a caption, but we want to have the video just show you exactly what it is that we're talking about in that pr particular um, point in the story. Yeah, like vines, gifts, that type of kind of short, very quick burst in multimedia. As a follow-up question to that, how would you algorithmically do that? Uh, because editorially it wouldn't scale, but maybe it would. Uh, how, you, how do you guys depend on rolling that out? Yeah, so the, the, the way that we would scale, first of all, the efficiencies on the back end allow us to produce a lot with a very small team. So that allows us to do some degree of scaling. Um, the other idea is that we could partner uh, when we're getting into very niche uh, news. Uh, that we as a team ourselves aren't going to be able to cover. So we're talking to different uh, newsrooms in different parts of the world, uh, native language, if the people want news in German or Spanish. Um, there's ways you could do that. Uh, you know, Duolingo is partnering with um, BuzzFeed to produce their news in native languages. We could potentially partner with them to do that. Uh, but the other idea is to just uh, have these newsrooms natively uh, start to produce news using our CMS and either do a uh, content exchange or some type of licensing where we'd, ha we'd have to whole verticals uh, that we don't have currently that we get through partnering with other people. Anthony, I wonder if you could just say a word about um, the difference in sort of what it's like to work at a place like Circa. You came from Reuters, which is humongous, into a very tight, small organization where you're heading up a smaller team. Just talk about what that's like as a journalist going into this kind of a startup environment, some of the differences, some of the things you like about it, some of the challenges. It, it took me a while to really understand uh, this whole editorial workflow uh, that they've kind of developed, because it's very unique. Um, they, talk, they have a, a, their own language, how they describe what they're doing. They refactor stories. I didn't know what the heck that meant to refactor a story, because that's more of a, a programming term to refactor. Um, uh, so I really had to take a while to, to figure out how points get moved around, how things get updated. They do bridging, so stories interconnect to each other. So you could be in a point and see that there's two related stories that then bridge out. Um, and there's a way in the CMS that bridging occurs. Um, and the transition from Reuters to Circa, you know, I was working in a large newsroom um, and to be honest, the, the, the digital side of Reuters and, and the traditional newsroom, there wasn't really tight integration between the two. Circa, everything's very tightly integrated and mostly because you know, it's been built from the ground up. Everything's um, you know, one kind of core. Um, and I think the team being focused on a, a very specific mission, which is to develop news for mobile, um, the, we all kind of have this same focus on, uh, on how we're producing news and trying to think of different ways to, to do that in an efficient way, not only for ourselves, but to present it in a way that readers are gonna really uh, be able to uh, wanna pick it up in that, in that format. What kind of feedback have you gotten from some of the news organizations that you guys are kind of building off their content? And do you guys have some kind of ranking system maybe where you prefer one you know, publication over the other that might break the same story? Yeah, I, I mean, we're more transparent than I think even the organizations that we'll cite um, because, you know, we link directly out uh, when we're referencing them in a point. Um, and then we also have uh, sources cited because stories evolve over time. And if a point gets retired, we may not have that link in the story anymore, but that, that reference is always in the citations in the story. Um, but what we're doing, and I, I showed you that example of that article on the screen, you know, that was a news organization that's citing CNN, New York Times. Everyone does this, uh, but not everyone is as free to link out and show their work like we are. So I almost feel like we're going above and beyond what a lot of traditional organizations do in terms of showing their work, uh, but also building upon that and doing our own sourcing, going out and talking to people ourselves. So, you know, we're very much like a traditional news organization, but we're very... Um, we very much want to make sure that we're showing people all the work that we're doing in terms of referencing other places. Great. Thanks, Anthony. That's great. Sure. Uh, next up, we've got DA Day.